In this video, I will show you how to create a persistent inventory system in Roblox Studio. Before beginning, it would help out the channel a lot for more game development videos if you like, comment or consider subscribing. Let's begin! I will continue from the project we created in the player inventory video. If you haven't watched that video yet, please watch it before this video because I will build on top of the content covered there. I am adding it to the card and the description. Let me remind you the state of the project. As you can see, we can collect health and mana potions, the count on the UI gets increased as we collect them, and we can use these items by clicking the UI icons, and our health or mana gets increased, which is reflected on these bars. Currently, I have 1 mana and 1 health potion. If I stop the game and play again, I have nothing, which is very annoying. So in this video, we'll fix that and create a persistent inventory system. If you remember, we were using a structure like this. When a player touched them, the items let know inventory GUI with a remote event called item collected, and when that event was invoked, inventory GUI would reflect the updated inventory by updating the user interface. The count on the icons or creating the icons if there weren't any. And when we used an item, inventory GUI would let health bar know with a bindable event and health bar would get updated. Now we'll use a new script named inventory manager and we'll convert item collected to a bindable event between the item and inventory manager. Also, we'll need another remote event from inventory manager to let inventory GUI know that the inventory is updated. So we'll have a remote event called inventory updated for that. When we use an item in our inventory to increase health or mana, we have to let inventory manager know so that it gets updated. For that, we'll use a remote function called item use requested. Each time we click an inventory item, it will let inventory manager know that the player is requesting to use that item. Inventory manager will return true or false based on the availability of the item in the inventory. This way, it will be more secure because inventory will be held in a server script. I will walk you through how to do this in detail. Let's start by saving the project Roblox. I name it as Persistent Inventory and save. I go to Game Settings, click Security and enable Enable Studio Access to API Services because we are going to use data stores to store the inventory items for each user. The reason I saved the project Roblox was also to be able to use this service. Now let's open up the inventory GUI script. We need to comment out some lines. I select the old events that we need to change, so I comment them out for now. I'll also delete the item collected remote event under replicated storage. Instead, I'll create the events that I have mentioned. So I create a remote event and name it as inventory updated. Remote events enable one-way communication between client and server and are typically used for sending information. And I create a remote function named item use requested. Remote functions enable two-way communication. They can send information across the server client boundary and then wait for a response from the other side. Under server storage, I create a bindable event called item collected. Bindable events allow events defined in one server-side script to be subscribed to by another script for one-way communication. We have created all the new events and functions that we'll use. Now let's make some updates on the potion models and the script inside them. Let's start by creating a new folder under workspace, name as potions. I will move all models inside this folder. As you may recall, we had item scripts in each of these potion models. I'll delete all of them except one and make updates on the remaining one. Let's move it directly under the potions folder as well. Instead of putting a script under each model, we'll enable the functionality for all models from a single script. Let's open up the item script. I'll comment out these two and the events as well. Instead, I'll go local folder equals to script.parent to get the folder. The new event that I'm gonna use inside the server storage will be local item collected event equals to and it will be under game.server storage and its name is item collected. Now I'll get all the children of the folder. So folder colon get children. I'll write a for loop for i index and v value in i pairs of children. I want to do this for all children except the script, so first I'll check if it is the script or not. So if v is not equal to script, then I'll do this. So cut and paste, but we don't have item anymore, so we'll use v instead. Here again, v.itemType.value. 
Since we have changed the item collected event to a bindable event, we should use fire, not fire client here. This is how we are gonna do the same thing for all children of the folder except the script itself. So this concludes the updates for the item script. Now I'll create a new script inside server script service and name it as inventory manager. This will be quite similar to what we did in the daily rewards video. If you haven't watched that video, the link is on the card and in the description. You can go ahead and watch after this video. I'll use player service, so local player service is equal to game column get service players. We'll use another service as well, local data store service is equal to game column get service data store service. Here, to get data from the data store, I'll type local inventory data is equal to data store service column get data store. And I'll give it a name, let's call it inventory data. So I'll use these services and I'll use the events that we have created. So local item collected event equals to game.serverStorage.item collected. Local item use requested function is at game.replicatedStorage.item use requested. And finally, local inventory updated event is at the same place. So that inventory updated. These enable access to the events and functions that we are gonna use. Here we'll keep track of player inventory. So I'll create a local player inventories table. And we'll use the events of the player service. So player service dot player edit event and I'll connect to that with a function called onPlayerEdit. I'll copy that and paste for player removing. And I'll connect to that with a function named onPlayerRemoving. I'll create the functions here. Local function onPlayerEdit. It will get the player information automatically. Also, I'll create an onPlayerRemoving function as well. The first thing to do is to get the user ID because it is a unique identifier for each player to store their information and save it to the data store. User ID cannot be changed like player names, so that's an edit bonus. So I'll go local player ID equals to, I'll use the player information and get the user ID. Then I'll use this to get information from our data store. So let's create some variables local success, received data, Key info equals p call. This is a protected call and it lets us handle errors the code inside this function may throw instead of stopping its execution. And inside, I'll create a function and the function will return the inventory data column get async. So we are looking for that data. We want to get it from the data store and we are gonna look by the player ID. So we'll ask if there is any information about the inventory of the player with that player ID. Here, if it is success and we have received data, then we'll store that information in our player inventories table. So I'll create an element with the index of player ID and set it to receive data to save the received information into the table. But we may not have any information for that player as well. Maybe the player has just joined. So in the else block, we'll set that information. Player inventories player ID is going to be a new data. So health portion will be zero and mana portion will be zero as well because the player is new. When the player quits the game, we'll do a similar thing. Use the player ID, but instead of get async, I'll use set async. And we'll use player ID and player inventories information as well. So we are gonna save this value to the data store by using the player ID as the index. Also, I want to get rid of that element in our player inventories table. So I type player inventories index player ID equals to nil. Now I'll get item collected event dot event and connect to it with a function. So in this function, we'll pass in player information and item type. If you recall, the item script is sending the player information and also the item type. So we'll use these here. And again, we'll get the player ID first from that player. And then I'm gonna increment player inventories player ID underscore item type, meaning that the player has collected that item. This was the first event that we'll incorporate. We'll incorporate the inventory updated event as well. So here, every time we change the inventory, we are gonna fire this. I'll fire that at the client, and the client will be the player. Also, I'll pass in the information of player inventories player ID here. I'll use the same line after we have updated inventory with the item collected event. 
This time I'm gonna use underscore player. And finally, for the item use requested function, which is invoked when a player clicks on an item UI icon, so I go that on server invoke. It will be try use item. This will be a function, so I'll create it here. Local function try use item. I'll get the player information automatically, and I'll ask for the underscore item type again to understand which item the player is trying to use. Here again, I'll get the player ID player.user ID and I'm gonna check if player inventories of this particular player ID has that underscore item type. We can check with a greater than zero. If it is the case, I'll let them know by returning true. If not, I'll return false. But before returning true, I should update player inventories. Plus equals negative one. Also, I'll fire the inventory updated event as well for that client to let them know that the inventory has been changed. On the other side, in the inventory GUI script, we'll incorporate an event and a function. The first one is item use requested function, which is located at game.replicated storage column wait for child, and this is item use requested. Also, local inventory updated event, it is at the same place, replicated storage column wait for child, inventory updated. So we'll use these here. This is when the item is clicked. Here I'll type if item use requested function, I'll invoke server with the information of k, so we are basically using the type here, type is the key value here. It will return true or false based on the availability of that item in the inventory. If it is true, I'll call this function. We are not actually updating the inventory here anymore. And here we don't need to keep track of the inventory with this table. Instead, we'll use information provided by the inventory updated event. So here I'll go inventory updated event dot on client event and I'll connect to that with the update inventory function. But update inventory has a parameter of underscore inventory and we should use that here instead of the local inventory we were using. Let's play and see. Let's collect some. Two of each. It is working correctly. When I click on the icons, their counts get decreased, and we can see the change on these bars here. Let's stop and play again. It starts with the same inventory that we quit with, so it is persistent now. Two mana and one health potion. Let's stop and play again. We have two mana and one health potion. This is how we create a persistent inventory system in Roblox Studio. In the next video, I'll talk about Marketplace. If you enjoyed the video, please like and consider subscribing to support the channel for more videos. Make sure to turn on your notification bell to get notified. If you want a new game development tutorial, let me know down in the comments. You can get access to the Roblox project file from Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.